Hello, Timbercrest. This uh, chapel talk was actually presented on August 5th, but we are recording it for those who missed it. So, um, the Apostle Paul often wrote letters to fellow believers to whom he was unable to speak face to face. We're dealing with that a lot, aren't we? It was ordained that those messages be preserved for future believers. That's you and me. I've been wondering what it would be like to address today's Christians the way Paul wrote to believers long ago. It might sound something like this. Greetings from Susanna Hicks, recently retired Christian counselor, member of First Brethren Church, daughter of the living God. My heart and voice reach out to Timbercrest residents, many whose faces I cannot see and miss. You continue to endure the ups and downs of isolation, social distancing, and the unpredictability of this COVID virus. To those who have missed family members and friends and whose freedoms have been reduced, may God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you peace and joy through these unusual times. Although we sigh and shake our heads as yet another lockdown, let us not grow weary of encouraging one another. Slip a joke under someone's door. Deliver an uplifting card to everyone at your lunch table. Text your favorite scriptures to friends. Email a funny or inspiring story. Pretend it's Valentine's Day and place homemade valentines in strategic places around Timbercrest. Share your poetry or sketches. Take the time to call someone new. Make eye contact when you offer a smile. Small, personal gestures of kindness bring light to a dull day. And it's interesting how helping a neighbor can boost our own countenance. Matthew 28 tells us that Jesus came to serve, and I believe God designed us to receive pleasure in serving one another. That's how we look like him. The pandemic has prompted an increased request for counseling. Some struggling with mental health issues may experience increased symptoms. Others may be encountering changes in mood for the first time. As this is my area of expertise, please allow me to offer some information on and some coping tools to address two common mood disorders, depression and anxiety. For those wishing to review this information, handouts have been provided with your chaplain, Laura Stone. With many mental health issues, there are other conditions that could cause similar symptoms. So it's important to rule out physical causes before exploring a mental health diagnosis. Avoid diagnosing yourself. Talk with a doctor or a counselor if you suspect a mood disorder. Anxiety and depression can be treated successfully with appropriate medication through your primary practitioner. But don't rule out consulting a psychiatrist. They're experts in the field of mental health medicine. Whether or not you choose to consider medication, there are steps you can take to alleviate your symptoms. Let's start with depression. Lack of energy and motivation or pulling away from people and activities we typically enjoy can be symptoms of depression. Some describe, describe feeling a sense of heaviness in their bodies and difficulty concentrating. An increase in physical pain or discomfort with no apparent physical cause can also be a sign of depression so if the doctor's not finding a cause for uh, discomfort and pain, it could be a sign of depression. Feeling hopeless and helpless can lead to self-defeating thoughts such as things are never gonna get better, or I have no value or anything to contribute. What's the point? Please hear me when I say that Jesus, with Jesus there is always hope, always. Sometimes people consider suicidal thinking if you are having thoughts like this, do not hesitate to tell your caregiver, your doctor, a friend, or a chaplain. And if you hear thoughts like this or someone voicing this, tell someone who can do something about it. Staying alone in negative thinking is unhealthy and it's dangerous. Jesus valued each of us enough to take on and destroy our sins. Let Psalm 139 remind us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made and we know full well that his works are good. What can we do to help ourselves if depression is creeping in? Well, one thing you can do is get active. Walk, bike, 
join an exercise class, stretch, swim. Moving our bodies lifts our mood. It helps to have an accountability partner with this too. We're more likely to get something done like this if we know someone's waiting on us. So who can you get to walk with you? And set a, realist, a realistic activity goal. Unrealistic goals set us up for disappointment and failure. We don't need to add feelings of failure to our hopelessness. So don't tell yourself you're going to walk every day. Tell yourself you're going to walk once a week. And that's a goal you can meet. Secondly, gather support. All humans need support at times in life. If it's your time for a supportive hand, let friends and relatives know that. Galatians 6 2 tells us to carry each other's burdens. And verse 5 states that each should carry his own load. We need each other, but we also have an obligation to help ourselves. Number three, guard your thoughts. We did demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. 2 Corinthians 10.5 Our thinking is directly tied to our emotions. Telling ourselves things will never get better will just pull us deeper into depression. Reminding ourselves of the truth will provide hope. So a corrected thought might sound like this. I've been dealing with this issue for a long time, and I'm feeling discouraged. But there are things I can do to make myself feel better. So I will try one of these coping tools. Please notice that facing the truth also includes admitting our struggle. That's part of the truth. Trying to talk ourselves out of feeling down can be self-defeating. Thoughts like, I have so much I could be thankful for. I shouldn't feel dis depressed, especially if I'm a Christian. I must be weak in faith. Shaming ourselves only increases the weight of depression. John 8.32 reminds us that the truth will set us free. God knows our weaknesses and invites us to call on him. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. He's inviting us to come. Number four, seek simple pleasures. What is something small that makes you smile? Walking outdoors. Um, I, the day I gave this talk, I walked out of my, my door at eight something in the morning and I just took in a deep breath and loved the smell of just the smell of the earth, the dirt. Um, and it brought a smile to my face. So very small things can have a lot of impact. So what do you like? What brings a smile to your face? Watching the sunrise? Sharing a morning cup of coffee or tea? Watching funny videos? Hitting golf balls? Working a puzzle? Um, dance to a favorite tune? Sing out loud? Write a letter to God? Paint? Tell someone a joke? This morning I was on a chat line getting help with my computer. And before I ended the chat, I said, I hope something brings a smile to you today. And he texted back, this has already given me a smile. Thanks, you've been my favorite customer so far today. Something very small gave a smile to him. Small things can make big impact. Five, embrace the truth. Your creator God is the only one who can define you, define you with accuracy. Depression will lie to us about ourselves, about others, and the world. So what does the Bible say about who you are? Well, God not only tells us the truth, he is the truth in John 14, 6. John 16, 33 says, I have told you these things so that you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. That's the truth. But take heart, I have overcome the world. The word spoken to Israel in Jeremiah 31 can also apply to us today. I've loved you with an everlasting love. The Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. I will build you up again. God is faithful to provide life-giving truths in his word. So spend time asking him to show you his truths. Write them down and review them. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is alive and active 
Cry out to God, even if he seems nowhere near. Don't wait for the right words or the perfect moment. Pray simply from your heart. Help. I feel lost. I feel like I don't have any faith. Please help my unbelief. Sometimes we need to hear ourselves pray out loud. Pray out loud. The psalmist in Psalm 130, 1-2 appeals to God like this. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. There will be times in our Christian walk when we doubt God's presence. But rather than turning away from him because we think we lack faith, take your doubts and discouragement directly to him. This is not lack of faith, but proof of faith. Why would we turn to God if we didn't expect him to answer us and to hear us? Number six, do not wait until you have the strength or the will to begin using some of these coping tools. Depression will drain our energy. It is almost guaranteed we will need to gently force ourselves, ourselves to apply them. It's kind of like taking a pill. Most people don't like taking pills, but we do it because we know it's going to help us. So take small steps in the right direction and your feelings will follow. These strategies that I'm sharing are backed up by research and they are effective. Be your own best friend and keep trying them. Let's move on to anxiety. Can something as tiny as a virus cause an increase in anxiety? Yes, it can and it has. COVID-19 has separated us from an important coping mechanism for mood disorders, family and friends to support us. Difficulty controlling excessive anxiety and worry defines generalized anxiety disorder. The diagnosis may include feeling restless or on edge. We might feel fatigued and have difficulty concentrating. This may include having our minds go blank. Feeling irritable, muscle tension, difficulty sleeping may occur. So what are some things we can do to manage anxiety? One is to recognize your anxiety. Typically, our bodies begin to tell us that we're feeling anxious. So do you feel jittery? Has your heart rate uh, started and has it increased? Do your palms feel sweaty? Do your shoulders feel tense? Is your stomach upset? Once you know what your body is trying to tell you, you can apply self-soothing strategies. So you can begin to say, hey, what is this? What's my body trying to tell me? I must be feeling tense about something. I must be worried. So let me slow down and pay attention and try to figure out what this is and how to cope with it. So one thing you can do is inhale and exhale slowly. So taking in a deep breath at the count of five and letting it out slowly can help. Because what you're doing is you're calming your body. And when you calm your body, you calm your emotions. Another thing that can be helpful is actually running your hands under warm water. The other thing you can do is move your body. Anxious people sometimes pace. They bounce their feet. They chew on their nails. But taking short walks or stretching uh, the body can alleviate tension. So get moving a little bit. Uh, number four is to capture and confront those anxious thoughts. Many of us are not aware of these automatic thoughts that pop up. We don't even know we're thinking action, anxious thoughts. Something like, what if the country can't manage this pandemic? What if we get shut down again? What if a member of my family gets sick? We don't even know that these thoughts are running in the back of our minds. These are certainly realistic concerns. They are. But dwelling on what might happen can become a never-ending cycle of dread. So what can we do about worrisome thoughts? We can challenge them. So once we become aware of what that fearful thought is, we can begin to challenge it. Uh, one thing you can ask, has what I fear ever happened in the past? Most of the thoughts that we have really don't, uh, most of our fearful thoughts don't actually come to fruition. Uh, we can ask ourselves, what is the likelihood that this could ever happen? 
it probably is possible, but uh, it's also probable that it won't happen. So what is the truth? Let's take COVID. Well, the truth is the country is doing the best it can with the information they have gathered. We're still learning about this as we go along. All of us are. We're doing the best we can. We've come this far. It's hard, but we will get through this. We've gotten through it so far. The other thing is to consider the worst case scenario. Now, a lot of times people don't like to do this. So when I ask people, so what's the worst that can happen? They'll say, I don't want to think about the worst that can happen. But in reality, if you can state what you think the worst that, can, is, that could happen and then face that and make a plan for it, it actually lowers an anxiety. So um, if our country, so for instance, if our country fails to manage this pandemic to the best of its ability, uh, well, I will educate myself and I'll do my best to stay safe and to take care of myself. I cannot take care of my family. Um, we are separated right now, but I will trust that, do the, that they will do the best they can. After all, I'm ultimately in charge of taking care of myself and to the best of my ability, I will do that. The other thing you, do, you can do is to help your brain rest. So writing down those worrisome thoughts can actually help your brain rest from the thoughts that you're worried about. So keep a small notebook next to your bed, next to your chair. When you become aware of those worrisome thoughts, just jot them down. And for those who are Christians, you can offer those up to God. A way to do that again is to write them down and put them aside. Put them in your Bible. Put them in a prayer box. Stick them somewhere where your brain knows that God now has these thoughts. 1 Peter 5, 7 tells us to give all your worries to him because he cares for us. He knows when we worry and he invites us to come. So go. Number five, just learn simple relaxation exercises. These can easily be found online. You can Google um, relaxation exercises. And with practice, if you go through these, the body can learn the difference between a relaxed muscle and a tense muscle. So again, just download these, practice them, and after a while your body will learn the difference between a tense and relaxed muscle. We actually have to teach our bodies to relax. The other thing you can do is lower caffeine and sugary items. So this can um, contribute to anxiety. And finally, uh, you can turn towards God. So in Matthew 8, 26, Jesus spoke to his disciples. You have little faith. Why are you so afraid? And then he calmed the rolling waves. God reminds us that we are of little faith, not to shame us, not to accuse us, but just to tell us he knows how we are. Struggling with our faith is not unchristian. God already knows this about us. Shame will send us into hiding. Just like Adam and Eve, when they felt shame, they pulled away from God. God does not want us to pull away from us in shame. He wants us to admit it and come to him. He already knows this. So the truth will set us free. The anxious author of Psalm 9419 94, 19, speaks to God. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy turn in his direction. Finally, with any mood disorder, be kind to yourself. Some people are prone to depression and some are wired worriers. Don't let con these conditions define who you are. Admit the struggle and do what it takes to minimize the negative impact that it might cause. Keep going, friends. Life is good and God is great. Let's pray. Father, you know us so well. You know that some of us worry more than others. Some of us feel sad more than others. You already know this about us. You encourage us to come to you. So, Father, I pray that we will come to you with these and that, Father, you will um, give us the ability, the strength, the one step it takes to begin to use these coping tools. You have provided them for us. So, Father, as we continue to deal with this pandemic, we thank you that you've given us tools. You are a mighty God, and we will trust in you. In the name of Jesus, amen.
Thank you.